This is Andrew with HKN, and I have another uh, EC3101 problem. So today we're given a time function equal to 2 over t squared plus 1. And we are going to take a discrete Fourier transform of this function. And in doing so, we want to find um, t, which is the minimum or the maximum, apologies, the maximum sampling time that we can have. And we're looking for n0, which is given as t0, which is the, uh, the time for which the, ma the function reaches 1% of its maximum value, so we call that the length of the function, because that's about the time we're going to cut off and say that the function is essentially zero from then on, um, divided by that t that, we, that we're going to find. And we also are given that it must be a power of two. So we're going to find n0 and t that closest match our criteria. And we're going to do this two different ways. So both of these methods need t0, which we're not required to find, but we need to find t0 in order to get n0. So in order to get t0, our f of t is f of t0 equals the maximum value of this, which it just so happens that this attains maximum value at time equals 0. So the maximum value is 2, and we want to divide that by 100. So if we solve for this equal to our original function, uh, for time much, much larger than 1, f of t is essentially 2 over t squared. And if we set that equal to 2 over 100, we get t0 equal to 10. So that's the t0 we're going to be using for the rest of this problem. Now, the first way we're going to go about doing uh, finding t is we're going to use the 99 percent criterion where we're going to find the point where the frequency response, which this is the Fourier transform, uh, the continuous time Fourier transform of our function. You can look that up. It uses a duality property. You can look it up on a table. Um, it's when this reaches 99 percent of its maximum value. The maximum value of this function happens to be 2 pi at omega equals 0. So you can see that just from the graph of it. This is the graph of 2 pi e to the negative absolute value of omega. But you can solve that using some derivatives if you want. But, or you can take my word that it happens at omega equals 0. So in order to find when f of omega, so it would be actually just f of the bandwidth b equals 2 pi over 100, which is going to equal to 2 pi e to the negative omega. So the 2 pi's cancel. And we're trying to solve here, so we're going to take an ln. So we get the negative ln of 100 equals negative omega. And so we get that the ln of 100 is equal to omega. And this is the effective bandwidth of our function. And so we need to find the, um, the Nyquist sampling frequency. The Nyquist sampling frequency is that the frequency of sampling has to equal to 2 times the bandwidth. And the t that we're looking for is going to be 1 over the sampling frequency. OK, so our maximum sampling time interval is going to equal to 1 over, our, uh, 1 over 2 times our bandwidth, or our Nyquist frequency. And this is going to equal 
0 0.682 given all of these calculations using ln of 100. Um, that's an approximate value. So now that we have t, we can calculate n0. n0 is going to equal to t0 over t, which in this case is 10 over 0 0.682. But if you also remember, it has to be a power of 2. And the closest power of 2 that this is, that is close to this, the closest power of 2 to this, that's the word, um, is 16. So we're going to use n0 equaling 16. Now that we picked the value of n0 equals 16, we have to adjust our t value. So if that's true, we get that 16 is going to equal to 10 over t. And that gives us a value of t equaling 0.625 or 5 eighths. And so that is the first set of n0 and t that we are going to have for this discrete Fourier transform. All right, so now we're going to do this, uh, do this a second way. So the second way we're going to do it is we're going to uh, define the bandwidth of our function as the, t the time where the energy of the signal up to its bandwidth is 99% the total energy of the signal. So if we were going to calculate the total energy of the signal, we're going to use uh, the fact that it is symmetrical. And we're going to use the integral from just 0 to pi of f of omega squared d omega, which if we plug in our f of omega, is 2 over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to infinity, of 2 pi squared e to the minus 2 omega d omega. And if you evaluate this integral, you will get 2 pi is your answer. So now that we have the energy of the signal, we want to find the energy up to the bandwidth of the signal. The energy up to the bandwidth is a similar integral. It's 2 over 2 pi, the integral from 0. But we're going to only go up to the bandwidth, not up to infinity. Because we're going to say that's where we're cutting off. Uh, it's going to be the same function. 2 pi squared e to the minus 2 omega, d omega. And if you evaluate that integral, we end up with 2 pi times 1 minus e to the negative 2 times the bandwidth. Not negative, apologies. Just e to the negative bandwidth. e to the 2 times the bandwidth. So we're going to exploit our, form, our criterion here. And that is that it is 99% of it. So we have to do 0 0.99 times the energy of the signal, which we solved to be 2 pi, is going to equal to 2 pi times 1 minus e to the negative 2b. And we want to solve for what that b is. So the two pi's are going to cancel here. And we're going to get that 0 0.01 is going to equal to e to the 2b. And so we get that the ln of 100 negative ln is equal to 2b. And so that we get that the, and so actually we're looking for two times the bandwidth. So we can just leave it there. 
Okay, so now that we have our twice the bandwidth, which is our Nyquist criterion, um, we need to find the T from this. So we remember that T is 1 over the Nyquist frequency, or our sampling frequency. And this is going to equal to um, 2 times the bandwidth divided by 2 pi which if we do this, we get 1.366. And now that we have our t, we can find n0, which was 10, or our t0, t0 has not changed, divided by 1.366, which is the t we just found. And again, this is going to be a not power of 2, but the closest power of 2 that we're going to use is 8. So we're going to use n0 equals 8. Now that we have n0 equals 8, we also know we need to find our t that makes this true, given t0 equal to 10. So we get that 8 is equal to 10 over t. Or that t is equal to 1.25, which is 10 over 8. So we got n0 and t, two different numbers, two different ways. So the different criteria of finding uh, t will get you different answers. And so that really depends on what you're more interested in in your discrete uh, conversion from analog to discrete. So, hope you've learned something. Have a good day, guys.